personal reasons for starting the SES, really, well, I was a Royal Engineer, and the sappers, as we're known, are very much explorers of the army. And providing you um, ran a good show in the normal way in the army, they would give you leave to go off and do some exploration in between tours, providing you took some of the soldiers with you. And so I really started doing expeditions underwater. I was an army diver working in the Middle East. Later on, we moved into the desert where the minefields of World War II had to be crossed to get the oil companies into the Sahara. And so we were doing exploration and mine clearance there. And then coming back to England, of course, things grew and grew and grew. So it was really a, a combination of my work as an engineer with this love of exploration and challenge that led me on to start this idea of the SES. The Scientific Exploration Society began following the first major navigation and exploration of the Blue Nile in Ethiopia. This was an army-backed expedition with a lot of scientists from places like the Natural History Museum. It hit the headlines. And afterwards, uh, the army said, you really ought to set up a charity to control and run this organisation and, of course, channel the money. So the Scientific Exploration Society was founded. And straight away, we carried out uh, an important medical expedition in the Dalek Islands of the Red Sea. That went on to a, uh, another much more major expedition, crossing the Darien Gap between Panama and Colombia and paving the way for the Pan American Highway which is still to be finished. Uh, and then after that came the Congo expedition, uh, doing research into a terrible blinding disease called onchocerciasis. And on that one, some young people took part. And afterwards, they went around the world lecturing to schools and universities, inspiring a sort of uh, Elizabethan spirit of adventure. The Prince of Wales saw this and said, if you can do this with two or three youngsters, why can't you do it with two or three hundred? And so, indeed, Operation Drake was born on the uh, anniversary of Drake's circumnavigation, the 400th anniversary. And that was such a huge success. Uh, halfway around the world, in our uh, splendid boat, the Eye of the Wind, the Prince of Wales said, you can't stop now. Make it bigger. Do it again. I was horrified because the cost had nearly broken us. But Operation Rally, uh, named after Sir Walter, was born and that went on and goes on even today as Rally International. But then the SES continued to grow, doing expeditions for older people and younger people and encouraging young people to launch pioneering worthwhile expeditions and, as Andrew Mitchell once said, being pioneers with a purpose. The most difficult expedition I've ever been involved with, I think without a doubt, was the Darien Gap because the terrain, the weather, the people, and finally the vehicles breaking down were all against us. The fact that we managed to get the team through um, was pretty remarkable. And we only made it by the skin of our teeth. The rains usually come after 100 days. And it was on the 99th day, which fortunately was St George's Day, we actually broke through and got the cars at the far end. But, of course, there was a huge team behind it, people like uh, Land Rovers and Range Rovers uh, working with us, and also the Army Air Corps Beaver, and not forgetting, of course, the armies from the Americans and also Panama and Colombia, who took part. How many members in the SES? Well, we started with a handful of about 50, many of whom had been on the Blue Nile, and some of them are still alive. I would think now there must be about seven or eight hundred uh, around the world, uh, mostly in, in Britain, uh, but we've got quite a few in America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and elsewhere. We've got people of like minds scattered all over the world. I believe to be a pioneer with a purpose, you have to do something worthwhile on your expedition, not just to go out there to have fun. We hope it'll be fun, but that mustn't be the main purpose. Uh, an explorer, I believe, is somebody who goes out and brings back information or does something to help people who live in the area or the wildlife, the fauna, the flora, whatever. And so that is the purpose. And all the expeditions we back, therefore, have a purpose, usually scientific or community aid. 
Community aid programme of the SES is very much centred around us doing something to help the people in whose area we're going to work. After we help them, they help us, and the results of this help everybody. So it's very, very important not to just go in blandly and forget about the local people. You've got to offer them some aid. And the particular one, of course, is medical aid. When all the expeditions I do, I always take a dentist. And in some countries, that's the greatest thing you can give, is a dentist to give free treatment. But not only that, you can help with building of schools, clinics, and, and so on. And generally, uh, enduring yourself to the local people and showing you're not just there to take, but you're there also to give. I believe that organisations like the SES are important because it does give young people an opportunity. And although there are other organisations doing great work, uh, the RGS, the RSGS, the Explorers Club in America, uh, I think we do more than most at encouraging the coming generations and giving them a foot on the ladder. And also the experience of some of the old, old fogies like me uh, who can help them and mentor them. When somebody joins the SES, the first thing obviously a lot of them want is advice. Inevitably they want to know, how do I raise money? <laughs> uh, well, we give the best advice we can. Sometimes we can lend equipment. We've got a certain amount here, although it's getting a bit old now. But um, it's really meeting other people and swapping ideas. And, and I mean, for instance, uh, in this very room, we've had frequently members come in and ask about some of the expeditions we've done in the past when they are visiting the same area. Leveson Wood came to see me before he set off for the Darring Gap to find out the problems of getting through this uh, inhospitable piece of terrain. The Explorers Award is a very important step for young people because raising money is damn difficult. And if you've got no track record and you don't know a large number of people with money to spend, raising those pennies to actually go out and do a worthwhile project is the first big obstacle. And the SES awards give someone an opportunity to jump that first hurdle. Once they've got a bit of a reputation or they've got experience, then, of course, they are in a much better position to do further expeditions as they go on. The first thing you do in planning an expedition is to make a reconnaissance. Time spent in reconnaissance is seldom wasted. I think Napoleon said that. I may be wrong. But uh, uh, so that's the first thing. And there, you see, this is where the SES awards come in because they very often enable uh, a young explorer to go out and do some reconnaissance or at least get the information about the area into which they're going. And you can't really plan a successful expedition until you know something about the, the difficulties in front of you. My advice to all people wanting to go into exploration is, first of all, find out something about themselves. And I always recommend the best way to do this is to go on an outward bound course. You can do this at 14, 15, 16 years of age. On an outward bound course, you will find out your strengths and your weaknesses. And you can build on your strengths and try and cut out your weaknesses. And that gives you a good idea of what you're capable of doing. So that is the first step, I would say. And that applies not just to able-bodied people, but also sometimes to disabled people. I mean, some of the people we've had on Drake and Rally were in wheelchairs. And they can still do amazing feats. But it's a question of finding out how much you are capable of doing. To make a career of expeditions is a very difficult thing to do. When you read through history, you'll find that you've always got to have a job of sorts behind you. You're not going to become a millionaire. I don't know many uh, explorers. Richard Branson's a possible exception who've become millionaires through exploration. But you've really got to have some other job. I was lucky. I was in the army. Uh, some people have done it by being attached to a university. Others have got uh, benevolent uh, companies who've allowed them time off. But you've really got to have behind you uh, some sort of organization that can provide you with a backstop when you need it. Well, for young explorers, I would say never give up, keep going. But also for the older ones, I would say remember uh, that youth is a state of mind. Mm -hmm.